So I'm not concerned about this delay in the, the number crunching because the 30,000 is the level that we need to put in the EIR that they're proposing to put in the final year. Wouldn't need this level of detail. Okay. Um, Dina. Thank you. Two questions. One is uh, can you, can we still? get to certification before 30 June? And do we have a sense for the additional cost above and beyond the 200,000 the board approved, I believe, in a motion on last Friday, uh, that it would take to do the, the additional work you just described? Um, yes, I believe it's feasible from, from a DDMA and I'll speak for ICF, ICF standpoint um, in terms of responding to comments and getting that EIR to, to the board um, in time for two votes, just in case. And um, the second was cost. Oh, cost. Um, we're not requesting any additional funds. I don't believe ICF is. But what was what is different now is that we have pulled the attorney fees out of our proposal and used 25 of that to do the, the memo that, that we went through, the memo process we went through last week. So we don't have any attorney fees, but um, I'm not sure if we want to add that. So that's, that would be a discussion item. <laughs> yeah, so the, uh, just to note on the, that $25,000 contract with the attorneys uh, was spent in eight days. You know that that is a uh, something. You know, uh, I've been like, like, I've been trying to uh, take into account all of these these variables as a, to do my job, I guess, to be able to recommend uh, stuff to the board. And and so it's useful for me to hear these conversations and hear the deliberations that you all are making. But obviously, the policy makers, so at least. Yeah, um, I think that the you know, the four board has already made an action on this, and, and the new information here doesn't, I think, change that after me. So I, I would like to make a motion to just accept this, uh, accept the, the new information that we had, and uh, vote on it and move on to the next, the next item. Second. Second. Your discussion. Sure. Um, I have some concern about the fact that the recommendation I don't see in the agenda report. And uh, so I have some concern about Brown Act consistency with us not taking this action to kind of, kind of move, ahead, move ahead. I think the recommendation, if there was a staff recommendation, would have been best had we had it before the vote. Um, but I'm gonna support the, the, the motion to move ahead Basically, um, there was information we heard in, in closed session regarding the legal concerns. And uh, without wanting to reveal that, uh, the nature of that confidential information, my understanding was we were better, more legally safe moving forward the way we were. So I'll just leave it at that.
for that extension. Chair, I wonder if procedurally it would be better to just receive the report again. Uh, I just am concerned about the loan act. So it affects, with effectively we have the same action, but I think might protect us more. I don't know if our council has any thoughts on that. As I interpret the agenda item, it affords you the opportunity to make a recommendation to the board, board if you choose to do so. You are not required to take any action at all. If you decide that you don't want to to take action, you can just table the motion and move on down the agenda. So, so our action would be, in theory, or you got it wrong and let's revote. No, or you got it right. No, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying. What, what was? What's the action of the working habitat group if the board has already voted? So we would just say, hey, go back to the drawing board. That's what we tell you. With the voting members here sitting next to me. <laughs> if the habitat working group chose to make a recommendation, that recommendation could be consistent with what the board voted on. It could be inconsistent with what the board, board voted on. It would at most be a recommendation. But if you want to more fully inform the board, of board as to the group's analysis and thinking on these issues, this is a chance for you to do so. All right, so um, just, yes. I don't feel that I have any more information in the last 15 minutes than I had last Friday, that this discussion about the phasing in as being part of the alternative to go forward, we heard that at the four board meeting. I find this motion superfluous, if not inapt, in the sense that this organization, this group, we're under the four board, and so we're just trying to get additional information, but today we didn't get anything further that's going to say Marina is going to jump in and we know how much it's going to cost, which is where we're trying to get to this discussion. I'd like to move to that without any action on this motion or any other motion about this additional information. The point of this group is a discussion, which is what Josh started this down this road. No, I don't I'm know. Gonna, to, to, to share, I, yeah, I'm in such agreement. I don't understand why there needs to be an action here. I'm just trying to move this thing yeah. forward here. And I think that, can I make an alternate motion yeah. to table this? Great. <laughs> right. I, I don't think so. If we draw your motion, let's, let's have the maker of the motion withdraw the motion because the only need for action would have been if we were going to recommend something to the forum board. Since we're not, um, then we don't have to take an action. So there doesn't need to be a motion. I, I will. I will withdraw the motion, um, and but I would like to be able to then move on. By withdrawing the motion, I don't want us to then get caught, get wrapped around some axle where we just, you know, we're, we're rehashing discussions that literally had, we, we had last week. So um, my intent of calling for a vote was to move. So if I withdraw the motion, um, Chair, are we going to get So would you other? like, so you would like to move to 4D? Yeah, phasing discussion. Okay. Uh, or 4, no, 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 4C. 4C. Yeah. Okay. Everyone agree? We'll move to 4C. Great. I'll draw the motion. motion. Yes. Okay. And the second is okay with withdrawing the motion. Absolutely. even feasible to get completed. 
So we're delaying the phasing discussion. That was 4C. Now I can tell you that I've reviewed since 2007 every board item on this habitat conservation plan. And just about every six months, there's been a promise that the habitat conservation plan or the EIR is imminently to be approved. And that has resulted in additional money and time being spent on the site on this project. So now we're delayed till the middle of March to uh, even hear what this next alternative is that's being wrapped in at the last minute. So if you all want to move ahead with that kind of a um, fog in terms of where we can actually get by the end of June, that's you know, your prerogative as policy makers. So uh, Josh, let me ask you, because I think, um, you know, I've been around for a lot of this, oh, it's going to be here any minute. Um, and we've had time before, now we don't. So I guess this brings me to the question of the JPA and when we're going to, so I think at our next meeting, um, we are uh, supposed to hear back from the, um, the the working group on the JPA draft agreement, right? So it, it seems to me that we're, we're trying to work parallel tracks, and one thing would be that uh, we would want to make sure that the JPA is formed uh, as sort of the backup to um, anything that this group and Fora was not able to accomplish um, before June 30th. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, we are, we have been doing that. That's the reason we have the JPA initial discussion. I know Authority Council's been communicating with uh, other council to get feedback on that. We also have relevant information on, on the uh, feasibility of using uh, funds that is not going to have a conservation effort towards that that are going to be important to know. Um, so, yeah, we should definitely have that in the next meeting. You know, they, uh, again, uh, it's an unusual circumstance that we're in. This is not an ongoing agency, this is not a city that's going to be here in nine, six months or, or nine months. So, for unusual process, perhaps. So uh, we'll bring that information when, when we can, as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, I think the uh, uh, budget discussion is coming, and that will be a significant uh, consideration for you all to be So I think with that, we can move to, to 4D, which is the transition plan review and recommendation. So, um, <coughs> Uh, it was pointed out at our last meeting that the transition plan has language in it that uh, points to um, to uh, dates that have long since passed and um, other cleanup language that will be needed to that would be helpful to this process of what is going here. So Kendall has taken uh, some time to, to go through that language and, and is bringing some of that here. We're looking for you all to consider and make a recommendation that we can bring to the full board at the next meeting. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to be clear about the, what we're looking for today. There's some of the things that we're going to go over that will naturally have to come back to the working group for further refinement because they basically set the parameters for the transition of a fora. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that some of these don't necessarily affect the Habitat Working Group, but I want to walk you through all of them and also let everyone know that we're going to send this out to everyone so you'll have it and have time to digest it and get back to some other issues. This is really more a matter of refining or suggesting refinements to the transition plan for things that, let's just say, in terms of policy, are no longer quite the same. So, as an example, one of the things that's in the transition plan relates to revenue sharing. And on section 1.3, I've highlighted this part where it talks about the requirement that each entity pay its fair share and equitable cost of the FORA program. Uh, there is no FORA program when FORA sunsets, so our recommendation is that that be struck from the transition plan because it's no longer in effect. And just in case I didn't mention it, I did meet with um, legal on this. Uh, yeah. So to point of order, just I'm not being... Oh my gosh. 
Um, we understand this. My question is, I'm still trying to stay focused on the HCP. So every Friday morning, I am here, everybody is here, our time is so valuable. And as jurisdictions going through this, God bless you that you finally have some changes to this that are consistent with the law. I appreciate that. Can we get to the habitat portion? I'm getting there. And so to skip this yep. part and get to habitat, thank you. You're yep. getting there. Um, some of these things relate to the habitat plan, so just bear with me. Okay. So reuse plan, master resolution, again, that goes to what is in the plan. We're talking about striking that because there will be no need for a master resolution, which is also uh, hard and in go with that. Um, funding of habitat protection, this relates to you guys. This is currently in the plan. Um, this is something else that would, of course, go away because there is no CFD that is funded past this. So it will be removed. And then we get from passing litigation because we don't care about this. Now, this is the part we really care about. This is 2.1.4. This currently, as it is written currently, it talks about um, the transition of funds in 2019. As we all know, we're in 2020 now. So the suggestion here, first of all, we've updated the amount to be 17 million, which is the amount we believe that will be available. Um, but the other part of this is basically specific to a joint powers authority. The way it is currently written is that the funds would then be distributed um, without an H, sorry, without the JPA. What we're suggesting here is that the Habitat Working Group start having this discussion with how the distributing of the funds might occur. So we have the 17 million, and I've heard this group talk about, for example, could we transfer the money over to a joint powers authority? And a preliminary look at what the legal team has found is that that may be possible, but you need to have the JPA formed sooner rather than later. If the JPA is formed after the forest sunset, that transition of funds becomes almost impossible. The other thing that's very important here is that under the Miller Roost Act, based on the um, terms have said, um, it would be possible for the JPA taking on that role to use those funds for studies, which means that if this group decides to go on past, it's looking like, yes, you could use that to revisit the HCP and revisit the EIR if that is the group's desire to do so. What we need to do, though, in this transition plan is like lay out the what ifs of that happening and not happening. So one of the things that we want to talk about is, look, is the number 1.5 million, is it 500,000? I don't know, we need to have that discussion. We need to memorialize, like we David mentioned previously, where those funds will go while the decisions are being made. Will they be in a, you know, a, a fund, of some, an interest bearing fund during such time as you guys can continue working? And then if that doesn't happen for whatever reason, What's the distribution of the 17 million? Is that for the land holding jurisdictions? Does that also include the colleges? Is that based on acreage, species, contribution to the CFD? These are negotiated pieces. So our goal here is to talk about what that's gonna look like. We don't anticipate settling it all today, obviously, but this is a critical piece of that transition agreement because what's in there right now will not address a number of the things that this group wants to do. So what I'd like to do is, is kind of take a moment and sort of open it up for comments, questions, ideas, so that we can then start formatting what this might look like, bring it back to this group so that you have something to react to. But fundamentally, this section has to change in order for that to, to work. Um, I also just want to mention a couple other things, then we'll get back to that again, where we are, in previous versions, there was a requirement, for example, that um, you had to have a transition plan implementation agreement in order to get your CIP funds. We're striking that because there's really no mechanism. Uh, real property is going to Seaside. And then I just, for those who are, were also interested, and this I think is important on a tangential way, um, while LAFCO has, has made noise about wanting 1.5 million um, in litigation, right? In the existing transition plan, it clearly states that the county will continue to sequester property tax funds to retire any debt, recognized debt, um, post for a sunset. So if for somebody dropped paper or there was unfunded pension liability, whatever that might be, there's already a mechanism in place 
for funding that. And the reason that's important is that there's not $1.5 billion sitting around in a foreign bank account that I'm aware of anyway, ready to go to uh, these agencies. And I'm mentioning it, of course, because it kind of relates directly to the go EIR, don't get go EIR question. So I want to take it back up to this piece with the habitat for Gail and everybody else and say, OK. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. The, um, the real question here is, if we don't have a JPA, what happens? And that's, I think we all understand if there's a JPA, that, that's pretty clear. We can allocate funds to do an EIR, do a HCP, whatever that might be. But if not, we need to have a recommendation for the board about how that's going to happen. So just a quick question. So the JPA that we're contemplating, is that JPA okay according to the existing transition plan? It seems to be being called by a fairly specific name. Um, so the JPA, if, if I understand this correctly, and I'll defer to David on this one, but the informing the JPA, if the purpose of the JPA is to explore um, habitat, um, mitigation, maintenance, all that kind of good stuff, you can still have a phased approach, right, where you're, you're still doing your research. If you determine that after a certain amount of time, that you either determine that yes, the HCP is awesome, we're going to do this, go forward, God bless, all good, great. If you don't, there needs to be a mechanism in the Joint Powers Authority that then says we're not going to move forward with this, so here's what we're going to do with those funds, and that needs to be included in the transition plan as well as in the JPA agreement. Gail? Yeah. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. So just, you probably already said this, but I just want to be perfectly clear. So. If we form a JPA, if the JPA is formed before June 30th, the legal um, opinion is that the 17 million could be basically managed then by that group, for, so, long as for, so long as it's for habitat management related, as well as potentially completing the studies that are needed, uh, environmental review, as well as dra redrafting the HCP, which would take time, you know, the phased approach, the, the work involved for consultants for that. I think I heard you say that. And then, question, did you say it could or could not be used for litigation regarding, let's say, let's say FORA does certify the EIR on June 25th or something, and we get a lawsuit, um, can, and then so then the JPA is the successor. There's a lot of ifs. Could the JPA use that for litigation defense, or would it need to get some additional money for litigation defense? I'm going to defer to David on that one, but I want to make sure that, that it was clear on the, the new, there's a slight nuance on the JPA. Um, there's been some discussion in this group about having, it uses the waterfall approach, so if, if we go. The JPA in its formation would have to clearly state that it was going to take on the role of habitat from the get-go. And whether or not it actually goes to implement is a different thing, but it couldn't just be a study group. It would have to have a specific tie to that. David, did you want to talk about litigation? Because we kind of chatted about that just a little bit. A couple of points. Um, one of the thoughts we had that didn't end up on this slide is changing the name of the cooperative so it no longer says HCP. Perhaps Habitat Cooperative might be a better name. Um, getting to the question of litigation, uh, having reviewed the, the Mellow Risk Act, the actions that Bora took in creating the Community Facilities District, it appears that the, the $17 million in funds can be spent on direct cost of habitat management. Certainly the, the CFD had the ability, or has the ability, to conduct additional environmental studies, cover its administrative expenses and incidentals, and then there's a provision there that says that includes legal expenses. I have not been able to study enough to determine whether legal expenses means the cost of defense of litigation, or whether it could be applied to paying a judgment that might result in that's still an open question, but we, we certainly plan to investigate that further. Or in the legal cost of formation of drafting the contracts. It might be restricted. 
I, I would think that would be would be an administrative expense. But uh, now there are a, a number of very excuse me, can we hear have the benefit of that whole uh, section of the Sidebar on if right now the expense of forming the JPA, it seems like four is absorbing that money right now in terms of David's salary. Thank you. <laughs> so, the question that I was raising was if the CFD, the special district tax, in the definition of what that can be applied for, does when it says legal fees, is that the legal fees? that generates the documents, such as an HCP document and the management documents for someone drafting all of these things. Or, and that's a distinct different cost, because my understanding so far is that those fees have been paid from the general fund of FORA, other sources of funds. It could be the tax increment, could be something, but it's not coming from the 30% set aside that habitat that gets that habitat is collecting out of the special district tax. That was my question because that's one layer. The second, third layer, cost of defense and a liability of judgment. So there's like three levels of legal fees that I'm 